I mentioned before, this guy went to the comedy mothership and we're going to play his video now. Um, I just saw on YouTube uploaded today. Um, it's this fella here called Mark Fer. What's it called? Mark Frecero. Mark Frecero. Is that how you say that? How do you pronounce that? Mark Frecero. Mark Frecero. Mark Frecero. Mark Frecero. Whatever it says. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's continue. This is it. This is the video. Let's see what he says and what his experience was like. Grand opening of Joe Rogan's comedy club, Comedy Mothership. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, is he one of these comedian types? This is, might be a bit long. Is he, is he like a YouTube comedian guy? Oh, man. Come on, Mark. Just give us a review. Don't start doing skits and bits, please. I beg of you. But let's see. Okay, he pronounced Fresero. Okay, Fresh Chero. Fresh Chero. Sorry, Mark Frechero. Mark Frechero's channel, Comedy Mothership, Austin Grand Opening. Let's check it out. Queue around the block, bro. Shh. Hey, 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 hey. Don't take pictures outside the clubs like girls. No, no pictures allowed. Only men should only take selfies outside the buildings. Never pictures like standing in a line or next to them or pointing or like uh, with arms. Men should only take selfies in front of buildings. Have some self-respect and do like a really shy selfie like down here, you know? Never ever take a selfie like this when you're together like Oh, I like that. I didn't notice that, that's pretty cool. Many, 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 many white people. <laughs> That's the first thing I noticed. Austin's not the most multicultural place in the world, is it, eh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like copy and paste men here. Like copy, paste, copy, paste, command C, command V. Like, God damn. Oh, look at the ticket. Oh, nice. Legendary specials, I guess, pictures. Awesome. Oh, I like the interior design. It looks really nice. Fat man, little boy. I like the interior. It looks really cool. Oh, I love that. I, I'm not going to... I'm popular opinion. I know some people online didn't like this, but I love this alien lamp thing. This sorry, this this UFO lamp thing they've got in, in the foyer. I guess as you're coming in uh, next to the box office, I think this looks pretty cool. Let's not lie. If they start making, let's not lie. If they start making merch with the alien thing on it and this stuff on it as well, and some stuff is like free M and shit. You know, I'm you know I'm gonna buy it. It's a little bit like, but you don't have to get involved. You know it. Ooh, look at the bappers on that one, mate. Eh? Let's continue. Let's, let's see. Let's see that again. The comedy mothership was amazing last night. Like I said, that was the opening night of Joe Rogan's comedy club here in. Hey, the hands, man, the hands. Is this? He reminds me of that guy on Netflix. Who's that? Who's that Asian dude on Netflix? Who's that? Oh, he's doing the excessive thing with the hands. Maybe because he's he's going to say, "Oh, because I'm Italian." Nah, man, you, you you did too many flipping um too many improv classes, and the t-shirt's too small. Austin, Texas, right on Sixth Street, and I got super lucky. The fact that I got to get a ticket and go in and experience the first ever comedy show at the Comedy Mothership. Now, for legal reasons, I was not able to record anything when it comes to these stand-up performance. <laughs> for legal reasons, fucking dork. Well, you bring in your whole SLR and your rig trying to record people's set. For legal reasons. <laughs> you went to record himself laughing, watching a comedy special, love it. ...and everything. This is true for a lot of comedy clubs. They did this last night, this is pretty common as well. Where you actually get like a mini pouch, you put your phone in it, it's pretty much impossible to open. And then at the end of the comedy show, they open the pouch for you. However, though, and I'm really glad they did this, here's a picture of the stage itself. Ooh, they post this on their Oh, that looks really cool. Come on, man. That looks nice. What um uh can I ask you a question? This sounds this sounds weird. This sounds weird. This sounds a little bit like a dumb question. But I'm assuming in most comedy clubs in the United States, if they have this sort of section here. 
it's not really a balcony because it's kind of like it's not that high up but it's, it's basically technically a balcony will these seats be more expensive than these seats or does or do comedy clubs have like a flat rate i'll check it on the website anyway but just in case people know in the chat would it just be like a flat rate you pay like a 40 dollars plus two drinks or do you have to pay like a separate fee to sit here because i'd love to sit here this is a really good view and you get a little table to put your little chicken fingers on and your little chips and stuff and your chili cheese bites and your mac and cheese and shit would it be different it looks literally like the electric theater uh, depends if it's like a booth in philadelphia table a table situation in philadelphia vip seating is more okay cool so, so this this will be vip seating even though it's not really vip but hey i like this i like the design yeah exactly Co good corn stargate yeah exactly yeah it's definitely it's got stargate feel yeah i like it i like it man instagram today or the day after the opening night at the comedy mothership there are three rooms there's the fat man little boy and mitzi's bar and i remember walking into the fat man and looking at just the entire layout being like wow this is incredible i feel like the stage itself with that kind of like half circle or half ring reminded me a lot of stargate of course the venue is called the comedy mothership so it has a very like alien type vibe the entire layout though was amazing the way it worked as well which i thought was kind of interesting and this could have been just for the opening night or maybe the first couple opening weeks so to speak they sold out i think it was in like five or ten minutes for the entire two weeks of the wow. opening of the county mothership. So what I'm about to say might just apply to the opening weeks, or maybe they're gonna do this the entire time, I'm not sure. First off, you may have seen from the footage, we have to line up right by the Iron Cactus, a bit of a ways from the comedy mothership. They then check for tickets and give you a wristband, and they'd send up about three to five people at a time to go to the front, get searched, walk in and then enter into the lobby. And then pretty standard when it comes to a lot of comedy shows, it was first come, first serve. So it wasn't like you have assigned seating, so to speak. Whoever got there first got the best seat overall. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So you buy a ticket ahead of time that guarantees you entry, but then if you want to take a particular seat, you have to get there early. No big deal. That's that's cool. I'm alright with that. Everyone calling him a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> leave him alone so that's a big thing i will say like so if you are going and this is due for not just the comedy mothership but also the comedy store and other venues if you want to get a really really good seat just get there early yes in some venues there are like premium seating sometimes but typically it's like hey you line up whoever gets there first or has the first spot in line gets one of the best seats and then it trickles down from that and i gotta say i've been to a lot of comedy venues all over you know i'm a huge fan of of stand-up comedy and i feel like that was the most and probably not surprising the most high-tech and sleek layout of any comedy venue i've ever been to i feel like a lot of comedy and that's something i mentioned before that i thought was really cool and i thought that's why i was one of the people that thought the club would always be good i just thought about programming because i think brent no i'm sure joe's kind of a smart dude but i think earlier i was thinking oh if joe's gonna run it maybe it won't be that good but one of the things that you probably did pretty well was probably delegating have people running the actual club itself and laying it out but also i'd imagine you know having all those flipping you know years of experience touring around the country around the world you pick up little bits of what you like and what you don't like and then when you've got that money that rogan has you can literally do what you want because that's the one thing that kind of stops people making good spaces it's usually regulations um you know restrictions and stuff that you can build and obviously funds and time like, because usually the longer it takes to build something or to kit something out, the more money you spend. But Rogan has enough money to, you know, take, you know, how long does it take him to build this? It's like three years, it feels like, since he announced he bought, he was going to open the club. It took quite quite a while. But he's able to do it slow and methodical because he's got the money to basically hold out. And he's also been able to pour every single bit he's learned, everything he liked into the club. So it's probably going to be in his head what he thinks a perfect club should look like maybe to us it might not look perfect but to him it will be um which is why i think when i do eventually open my club my nightclub it will definitely be one of the best nightclubs in the world because of how flipping weirdly nerdy tizzy i am over nightclubs and even though it's weird and it's a loser you know interest but the fact that i've i've been to it so much i'm sure when i open mine it's gonna be one of the most world-renowned one because of all the learning experience that i've got that's my kanye moment let's continue venues have kind of like a i don't say an old school style feel but that's the best way i can word it i remember just walking in being like i feel like i'm in more of a uh, a music venue or a concert type room than a stand-up comedy club just because, as you can imagine, it's newly built, literally at the time of this video, you know, that was the opening night. So it was newly built, everything from the lighting to the sound to just all these little details, you could tell they put in a lot of work, even just walking around, kind of checking out the lobby and everything. It was just a phenomenal... 
Oh, wow, I didn't. Yeah, uh, yeah, I remember hearing. Oh, I don't know. So I don't. I don't remember hearing that. That's awesome. Eve said. Rogan said he hasn't built this club for profit. He's happy to break even. That should have. That should be how everyone should be. If you have money and these type of things, build it for. Just do it for the sake of doing it because it's why not? You have got your own club. You can perform at every single day. It's going to be incredible. And more likely than not, we'll definitely end up seeing somebody film a special day. It'll probably be um Rogan. Rogan's next special will probably be filmed in that place as well. So it's a great place, you know, to kind of go post up and perform when you want, film your special, nurture new talent and just catch a vibe in it. It's legitimately the best thing ever. Essentially like a, it's like a commercial version of a man cave, right? But you get to make some money and help people out. So, you know, and you, it's an excuse to get away from your family because you know these comedians love leaving their families behind. So you can always say I'm working. And essentially, you're going to hang out and drink beers and do some jokes. Phenomenal layout. And one thing they did, which I loved, is when you go to the lobby, when they're actually performing, there's a huge TV in the lobby. We can actually see the person performing on the main stage. Oh, wow. So I actually want to go to the bathroom, and the bathroom is downstairs. The fat man and the little boy are kind of upstairs. If you actually want to run to the bathroom, you can still look at the screen and hear it in the main lobby, let's say, as we're approaching the bathroom. So as you're taking a shit, you can hear Tim Dillon's punchline. You can hear Rogan literally humping the stool as you're taking the piss. That's legitimately awesome. Or whatever. Or let's say you want to go outside to like say smoke or something. You can still see the screen and hear it. I gotta say, what an incredible venue. The entire staff was phenomenal as well. Of course, all the comedians last night were amazing. I gotta say, for the official opening night of the comedy mothership of Joe Rogan's new comedy club, it was incredible. That face at the end, I, I, I don't want that.